Okay, so it's 6.05. We'll open the meeting. And first we have any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Uh, bills and payroll, we'll have to look at those later. Are there any, is there anyone here who's here to talk about something that's not on the agenda? Public comment, that's what we call public comment. Hmm? Okay. Well then let's just get to uh, the first item which is the Nichols Dam Road. Uh, what's to become of it? What's, and we just would like to hear what you all have to say. Can Maybe I you just understand? ask, what's the situation with the dam road now? Is the gate that Hardwick Electric put up right at the beginning of their property on the dam, or is it at the top of the road? Michael, does anybody know? It's at the end of It's at the end of first. Yeah. Okay, so it's right where the Okay. Could I, okay. Could I make a request? Uh, a lot of us are here about Nichols, but we're not in the loop about what's going on. So we would like to have an introduction to what is going on because we don't know. Okay. It's a long story. Yeah, well, it is. We need the I can just tell you a little bit about what's gone before the select board in the last couple of months. Uh, there's been some confusion about whether it's a town road or whether it's a private road, and that's a long story we can go into some other time. Um, when there, uh, a gate showed up at the top of the road last year and somebody said, Lucian said, well, I thought this was a town road. Why is there a gate here? So that started a whole lot of conversations. And the select board is trying to decide what's the best way to go. The campers up there think they had a private road approval in 1998, but the select board approved it, but they never went through the process. There is a legal process to what we call throw up a road in Vermont. That never was done. So, but for 25 years it's been going along. Uh, same problems as ever. Uh, and so we started by having a meeting a couple of six weeks or so ago for people to say what their positions were. And uh, the town has uh, some pretty good evidence that it is a town road and it's been on the state maps for many, many years. Uh, Hardwick Electric decided that they didn't like our interpretation and that they were going to assert uh, their um, authority as landowners, maybe landowners. <laughs> There's also a contention about who owns the land. But anyway, so they went and put up a gate and that sort of made things come to a head. Okay. Oh, okay, so I should have asked your name. My name is Kelly Frost. I live in Hardwick. I swim daily. Ooh, nice. Um, just about three miles. Yeah. Okay. You? Hi. Um, my name's Karen. Karen? Karen what? Karen King, K-I-N-G. Okay. And, um, so just to cut to the chase, so as of right now, there's no definitive answer as to who owns the Nichols Dam Road, and that's all still not decided. Right. Okay. That's why we want to get some public input, and then the board will decide. Thank you. Okay. I, I can add a little bit more to the. I was at the um, Hardwick Electric Commissioner's meeting um, last week, I think it was, and um, Kurt Behrens, the chair of the Nichols Pond Association, was there also. I think Norman, you were there on the phone, um, and there was one other camp owner that was there. I can't remember her name, um, and the. Commissioners sort of sounded like, um, you know, if, if you, if the town and the pond association could kind of figure out and come up with a solution for the um, abuse of the use of the dam, um, that um, they would be open to, to doing something, um, you know, uh, that isn't as radical as what Hydro Electric has done. 
my impression from that meeting is that they were going to wait until we could do something, but two days later, the gate was up there. Um, so that's just another, I think if the town and the pond association and every, anyone else who's concerned about it, um, you know, if, if we could come up with a solution um, for, so that the dam could continue to be accessed to the pond. This is going to be horrible to say, okay? And Go I'm ahead and say it. I, I yeah. have some horrible things yeah. I'd like to say. Uh, <laughs> you're, a lot of us are there almost every day, mm -hmm. and we're there with our kids, okay? Mm -hmm. I can't speak about how anything is past 6 o'clock at mm -hmm. night. Right. But I can tell you during the day, that is the place as a Hardwickian, as someone that used to run the preschool in Greensboro, mm -hmm. um, someone very involved in their community. I worked for Lamoille County Mental Health for 14 years on the road. There's nothing going on there that I feel ashamed about during the day. Right. It's, it's the nighttime. Nothing. I, I'm a camp owner on Nichols Pond, part of the Pond Association. It's more than nighttime usage, like right. through the night, ah. through the night. Um, and the Pond Association does not want to, that's what the Pond Association was, was trying to address, that kind of nighttime abuse. There's no, the Pond Association does not want to cut off any public use of the dam as a, you know, it's basically a town beach. Probably it is. Mostly for people in Hardwick, I think. Actually, we have people from Cabot, Plainfield. Mm -hmm. um, they come from the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. We've got a lady that comes mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. every weekend from East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually much more widely based than most people recognize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, and there really two questions here. One is, who owns the road? public or private. And the other is, uh, well, that all came up because of the misuses. So if there was any way, all the parties could work together but to uh, to um, make the abuses stop or patrol the abuses. They have over. been stopped yeah, during good. the day. Good. Okay? And I'm saying that as someone that doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, and goes every day, mm -hmm. okay? The abuses are not happening during the day. Mm -hmm. We did last summer hear about people supposedly breaking bottles and things mm -hmm. like that. It was checked out. There was no evidence. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that those of us that go often mm -hmm. did not experience that because if we had, we would have spoken mm -hmm. up, said something, and it would have been mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you Jessica next? Jessica Hart. Jessica what? Hart, H-A-R-T-T. -T. Okay. I live in Wolcott. Yep. Um, I go there often. My son learned to swim there. Mm -hmm. um, my boyfriend Tim wrote an email about, I say, yeah, I believe he sent it to Hardwick Electric and whoever would read it, the, you know, Phil Scott or whatever, about Nichols and how much how important it is to us mm -hmm. and um, we mow the lawn, we pick up the trash mm -hmm. every time we go there. Mm -hmm. There's no abuse happening really. I, um, you know, I personally cleaned up all the cigarette butts and and got rid of the fire pit and mm -hmm. nobody's been down there using it mm -hmm. or making new fires or doing anything. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, as far as I know, previous, like Russell stayed down there every night last mm -hmm. summer, but he's gone. Mm -hmm. He has not been there. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it's from his reports, there wasn't a lot of activity <coughs> down there. Um, so I don't know, I'm not a camp owner, I don't stay the night down there, um, but we are always very respectful mm. of that place. Were you the two that were up there the day yeah, I was we there a couple weeks ago? Yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just us, that was it. We yeah, sat there, it's you know. so beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's such a resource. Mm. But um, if I may speak, mm -hmm. um, I do think that the bottom line is who owns the road and you know what the law is and you know can I drive my car down there can I not 
drive my car down there. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I would yeah. really like to, and, and the fisher, the fishermen, you know, and, and the kayakers um, and boaters. I mean, can you give us um, like a legal overview mm -hmm. of what we can expect. I mean, am I going to be arrested if I go down there? Or, I mean, I, I just. Yeah, that's what we're those, trying those to. Are really, that's what we're trying to and, decide. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Not, oh, everybody loves it and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's 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 about the law and um, what people's rights are. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Jessica's boyfriend Tim said, um, this is not really the spirit of Vermont. Um. So can I add, the, so the road as it was laid out in 1915, or technically it was a right of way, but um, I know when you speak of roads, there's a right of way. There's um, a right of way before the road's built, yeah. is but what I think. And it's pretty much where that <laughs> gate is. Um, so the top gate? No, no. the bottom the gate. The bottom gate, the end. chain link. Yeah, where Hardwick Electric put up the gate. Right. Okay. That's, that's where the road that was designated in, in this old map um, that the town has, and um, that's where the road ends. So Hardwick Electric does have the right to put up a gate if they consider it their private property, the dam. Um, do they consider it private property? Uh, I think they do. Yes. Well, it's sort of a co-ownership of bundle it's, of rights. The EBI has bundle of uh, rights, and Hardwick Electric Park has a claim. Can I? It's not true that, it, that the road ends at that property line because we have maps from 50 years ago that go beyond this. The state has uh, maps that show the road going beyond. I mean, we've got a map that shows the road going to Macville and the East Long Pond. <laughs> yes, see the, um, Steve Ellis, do you know Steve Ellis? Mm -hmm. He lives on one of the crossroads headed uh -huh. to the road headed into Cahagan. Mm -hmm. And um, his wife grew up, and that is their family home. Really? Okay, and she has mm -hmm. since died, probably about five years ago. She was in her 60s, and she had told me there used to be a totally different road mm -hmm. headed into Nichols. Mm -hmm. Is. And she didn't, she didn't like describe it, but it almost sounded like the road that Andrew was um, working on to put, mm -hmm. um, to bring out lumber, when, yeah. where he put the first gate. Right. Well, okay. when the dam went Taylor. to Taylor Meyer, we got a camp on Nichols Pond. When the dam went in 2007, it was brought up to redo the ancient road, and that's where people would mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. below the dam and they walk up. You know, keep people away from the and that's probably the one that showed as being given up in 2000, yeah, 1916. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's talk of bringing that back. Yeah. But I believe in 2007 the town didn't want to give money to it, so it fell apart. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the town didn't want to spend the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's still an option too, because to keep people away. Camp owners, and that can be discussed further mm -hmm. a different access point. Diana, the lady in the back of the room has had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Hands. Hello. Hi, all. <laughs> My name is Lydia Menendez Parker. I live in Hardwick, but actually I'm a mile down the road from the Nichols Pond Dam. I know a lot of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, I just wanted to really briefly introduce myself because this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, I've spent the last 10 years, from 2010 to 2020, working on public access to swimming holes throughout the state of Vermont mm. with a land trust called the Vermont River Conservancy, where I was the assistant director. And I specialized in writing management plans for swimming holes. <laughs> so, I have helped organize a lot of community forums where swimming holes are the topic and public access to them is the question. I have a lot of experience. I just wanted to introduce myself because I can bring some of that experience to the table when we're talking about recreational use and issues that arise and how they can potentially be dealt with. And um, I also wanted to volunteer my time in a way that, as everyone here has described, how they put in their hours of you know picking up cigarette butts or mowing the lawn and kind of being a community patrol, if you will. Um, the um, service 
that is done by the people who love the dam and want to see it open for all is amazing. And oftentimes swimmers and paddlers aren't as organized as, say, the snow travelers mm. and the groups that have really well organized membership. However, I am interested in seeing that the swimmers, paddlers, anglers, sunbathers, you name it, nature lovers, bird watchers, you know, families, swimmers, um, have mm -hmm. an ability to organize so that when there are issues, they can be raised and the Hardwick Electric Department doesn't necessarily have to be the entity like trying to figure them out. But by organizing the people who do love access to the dam, there is a potential to like address issues with an organized body and not just the mm. ad hoc people who love it and do mm -hmm. it anyways. And that's still going to happen and that's awesome. And if a sort of friends of the Nichols Dam type communication network and, you know, tree, phone tree and email group, etc., mm -hmm. could be of service to helping see the Nichols Dam access well managed. Mm -hmm. I certainly lend my time to getting the word out and being involved in that type of organization. So I also would love to be kept informed. I can't stay very long, um, dinner calls. But um, I wanted to make sure you all could have my email or a way to get in touch with me. I set up a Gmail account, friends of Nichols Dam at Gmail, and I'm asking people to organize by like, saying, yes, I want to be involved in helping this be open and well managed. And I'm hoping that that can give this select board body as well as the Hardwick Electric Department, a sign -up sheet when a method of communication that is a little maybe um, more, you know, structured, so that these conversations can happen when the need arises. Mm -hmm. If there's an issue, how do we get in touch with people, etc. Um, I have lots of other ideas to share. This is not the time or place, other than hello, thank you, and there are so many creative. And as someone said, in the spirit of Vermont, ways to address this issue. And I thank wish you. you all good luck in discussing them. Yeah. And I want to help. Thank Lydia, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank That's everyone who's done more work than <laughs> yeah. I have. But I will lend my you know, name in the effort. OK. <laughs> Get her name Lydia. and her number. Lydia. Yeah. <laughs> so, friends of Nichols Dam at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning as a way for recreational users of the dam to have a methods of communicating um, with both Harbor Electric Department, Woodbury Select Board, any bodies, the, the camp owners mm -hmm. on the pond, etc should all have a means of communicating. And I know this is one of them. So mm. let's, mm. let's organize as a group to show we can take care of this place really yeah. respectfully. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, my name is Kyle Hayden. I live in Hardwick. Kyle um, what? Hayden. Hayden, OK. Yeah. So the gate is already up. What does that mean for the rest of the year as they figure everything out and are we not allowed to access it now or? Um, I think they were doing it to keep cars off with his unauthorized vehicles. We, yeah. we went up yesterday and saw the sign in the gate and stuff. And I think it was, I mean, they did a very mm. good job with the dirt. And it's the, the whole, it's the whole the thing. Is where you park, right? Well, yeah. I yeah. Receded, is, is it all receded or is it just partly so receded? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, well, well I understand which, they want to keep people off it. For now, oh, yeah. yeah, for a yeah. couple yeah. weeks. That, that makes total sense. But is it the, the gates, whole area the that's... The spillway gate. The spillway gate's yeah. gone, so I can see, you know, they don't want people to swim right now. Okay. They just kind of threw the gate up before any final decision. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering what's the plan for mm -hmm. the rest of the year. 
Yeah, some are short here. You know, we don't want to go up and park at the gate. It hasn't even started yet. Walk in and block campers. Or, no. You know. Yeah. But that would be determined yeah. by yeah. what the law yeah. says. Yeah. I think their next select board meeting is August 24th, right? They meet every third Monday. Um, the next uh, Harvest Electric yep. Commission, yeah. yeah. And August 24th is, you know, pretty much when school is back in session mm. and the summer is winding mm. down. So I agree that's a really legitimate question. Um, I I want to bring the request to the Hardwick Electric Department that they replace the spillway gate and consider having the chain down during the daytime, even if it's mm -hmm. back up at nighttime, as a potential, you know, just what well, are well, two that simple what they requests that with could the first be gate they put up was like an eight to eight type of thing, right. which is totally fine. Yeah. Right? It's not a place for a sleepover. Yeah, but that's a problem everywhere in every town and every corner. You know, know it, I mean, it's I'm unfortunate sure it's that they have to ruin it for everybody. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's true. <laughs> so one thing that it might be nice for the group that Lydia is trying to organize if we actually had a meeting before the before the or the commissioner meeting and actually got ourselves on the agenda and um, either had a proposal or just to let them let them know that um, the disruption that they've caused because um, it was pretty pretty much a unilateral decision that was made um, so I, that's so the by whom Harvard 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 Harvard. Harvard. Okay. so um the the guy that runs is Hardwick Electric. Is he David? Is no, I'm not, I'm not going to say his Mike. name in this meeting. But oh, okay. you already know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, know he's, when he spoke to me, he said that we were allowed to still go down there. We just had to park at the top. Exactly. So that's you but know, how that do people then access? You will, if you have a boat or yeah, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's a little and there much. are people. It's, it's yeah. a long walk. It's a long walk, especially close. coming back up. I think Chris had his hand with his. Chris. I'm not sure. Chris, did you want yes, to say I'm something? No, no, I'm all set. Okay, he's all set. <laughs> okay, uh, Michael, can you why don't you report on what the owners association? Decided or I wasn't at the. Oh, okay. That was okay. when the storm happened. And I didn't have any oh, okay. power. Okay. Um, okay. But I, I don't know. Norman, were you there or Taylor? This was the Nichols Pond Association. Right? Yeah, about the road mostly, but. Um, well, you know, I I can't speak for the owners association myself, but uh, you know, um, at the Hardwick Electric meeting. Uh, it was a civil discussion about it and uh, looking for a solution to the problem site. Um, my own feelings about things is uh, really that um, there's a lot of interested parties. Um, and um, I think if we could get all the interested parties around the table and look at how to do a comprehensive solution to the issues there, that'll work for everybody. That's what's really needed. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I think there's a way for that to happen in a way that will satisfy everybody's needs to the greatest extent. It would be nice if there was an organization about, mm -hmm. in terms of being able to put forth the public interest, but uh, there's the Owners Association, there's D.B. Hyde Corporation, there's, um, oh, you know, who are the other people? Well, Fish and Wildlife are interested too, they're interested mm -hmm. in access to the pond, and they like that there is access even though they don't own access. Um, but there's a lot of different parties and a lot of questions, of, and of course the town's ownership, but, and a lot of questions, and there's a, I think there's a path if everyone would get together and try to figure it out, mm -hmm. and it might take a while. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I think part of the solution is the other road uh, mm -hmm. they've started working on, but it's going to take a lot of money to make that into a viable solution, and then you still have the issue of what happens. But then you have, what, you still have where to park and where to put your chair and yeah you still have the issue of what happens <laughs> at the dam and that's why mm. there needs to be a comprehensive solution mm. to mm. see so what everyone's doing. At night. I mean that is the solution <clears throat> I would But that's but. that hasn't worked in the past and there's no type of enforcement. None of the police entities in the state 
um, Hardwick Electric, the State Police, uh, Washington County Sheriff Department, none of them want to deal with it. They won't, they won't go there. The camp owners tried to go and ask people, okay, it says 8 to 8, it's past 8 o'clock, it's time for you to go home, and people just, you know, got pretty abusive. And oh, you camp mean as far as leaving. As far as leaving, right. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's always possible if, if Hardwick Electric wants to be a part of a solution, maybe they can convince the harder police to go up. I mean, they won't go up if we ask them. If they, when I was at that commissioner's meeting, I brought up that question, and they said yeah. that they, they, um, they can't do that. They, they didn't think that they, they had the um, um, power or the... Uh, whatever to do that with the Harvard police. <laughs> yeah, but that hasn't that didn't that change in the last year so that any law enforcement agency can now go beyond their jurisdiction? Yeah. 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 Well, that that changed so last long. year. So that's all. I think that's all. No, I know. Sort of no, I know. I mean, yeah. camp owners have called the state police for years, and and there's never <laughs> really been any response. Though one time there was. Uh, Pretty quick response was when there was an underage drinking party there, and and they were on, on that in a, in a flash. Um, but mm -hmm. I've seen Hardwick police down there a few times, not often, but oh. usually probably if they're looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not really sure of the situation. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when we drive down there during the day or even in the afternoon, mostly there's not a single person at any of the camps, mm -hmm. and. We're quiet, and you know, like I said, you know, I, I, the, I guess what Karen said is the concern is for the rest of the summer. I guess we're just going to continue to go there mm -hmm. and, unless the law know, tells I me that I cannot. I don't really, you <laughs> and know, that's my stance. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that they block the gate. I'm not. I know it's not your fault, but then again, it's going to come. Where do we park? Well, we're all going to line up at the gate, you know, and mm -hmm. we're not going to park, block anyone's yeah. driveways, but like, what are we supposed to do? And how do you turn around? How do we, you I turn around know. before you, you back down in oh, there, you yeah. know, you got to be smarter than the average bear. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's going to create more of an issue now. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, like I said, I understand that they just repaired it. And the gra they they mulched it, and the grass mm -hmm. needs to grow. Mm -hmm. No, they don't want people on it because mm -hmm. it had a giant hole in it. But I mean, we still want to swim there, so I guess we still will. Right? I will, unless the law <laughs> tells me I can't. Mm -hmm. No, because everybody's so confused about who's what, where, what. And we're respectful, so we're just gonna continue to swim, you know. Mm -hmm. And we would love to be part of anything that has to do with this. Obviously, we're not Woodbury residents. Um, it's very important to us to um, mm -hmm. continue to be in the conversation. On you know, this. I think people also need to talk to the Harvard Select Board. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. No, that's a good idea. Get them involved, too. Yeah. yeah the biggest issue is the I literally thought I was yeah, going I, last I feel you. I, I, it. I was yeah. on the wrong yeah. night. Yeah. Be like, yeah. so the last person to leave closes the gate. <laughs> they don't actually. Well, no, I don't yeah, think they, they actually meet as a in person like we are. The meeting that I attended was totally okay. Zoom. Really? So this is oh, yeah. 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 Mm. But all, all, but also this is an issue at every pond at every corner of this state. You know, like there are people going places they shouldn't, there are people stealing from camps, there are people doing awful things. Mm -hmm. You honestly cannot patrol every single situation. I understand if it's a private road, but uh, we would love to be part of, you know, this conversation fully because it is 10 minutes from my house mm -hmm. and it's a nice place to be. So one of the biggest things that the commission mentioned at that meeting that they had um, in July was um, the lack of enforcement um, for anything, you know, they could they could do some kind of stipulation about how the dam is to be used, but there's there's no um, enforcement of that. That's that's one of their concerns. Well, and can that's I, been a major issue for you know when. Mm -hmm. um, my my daughter's now 21, and we had been going to Nichols since she could swim, mm -hmm. start to mm -hmm. swim. So it's been probably since she was about six. And um, in that time period, there has been 
no injuries that I'm aware of um, for about at least 20 years. Mm. Um, and we did have problems summers ago with mm. a gentleman who liked to eyeball 13-year-olds. Mm. And um, there were a group of parents mm. of us that um, couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you, and it took a while, we got creative, but we ended up parking vans all in front of the big rocks and blocking off the view <laughs> from the parking lot. Well, we couldn't do anything else about this gentleman. We called the police, but he left, okay? And he became a problem somewhere else. Okay, but it was a place where the police were willing to go mm -hmm. from there. Okay, and the other thing I can tell you about that, like the safety of children <coughs> is that um, basically the children are not allowed on the dam without a full vest that you would wear for water skiing or tubing or anything like that if they cannot swim and they are not allowed on the dam if they they can't or they they can't swim or their parents aren't right there with them and we do that as a community mm -hmm. so it may sound like there's there's no community control but to tell you the truth we're kind of a mom mm -hmm. when we're all together <laughs> and people follow Hmm. So it's that community that's going to um, yes. sticker with Hardwick mm -hmm. Electric to get use of the dam back. And it doesn't, hmm. it's not just Woodbury, obviously. But it hasn't no. been taken yet. We need an in-person meeting, that's what we need. Yeah. There's no legal... No, because even the Hardwick Electric guy, he told me that we are absolutely still allowed access, we just have to walk. He, yeah. he said we're not not allowed to go there. He said you just, mm. we put up a chain. He didn't say walk from where. He just said you have to walk. Mm. So you know I. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't carry say, in, carry out. He told me. I mean, yeah, that usually say, refers to your beer cans and stuff, not to your kayaks. But there aren't any beer cans anymore. <laughs> and chairs and your umbrella. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I look forward to proposing a possible date for a meeting and okay. inviting as many interested parties as possible. And I look forward to hearing the results of the conversation at this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think that going to the Hardwick Electric Department's next. Commissioner's meeting with some simple requests could be a useful next step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would the select board allow this room to be used for a meeting? Oh, sure. That form? Mm -hmm. But it is getting small. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to go down to the town hall, <laughs> which is all full of fire department stuff left over from the flood. But and then we can we fix can that. Yeah. <laughs> if you could please excuse yeah. me. Um, thanks to everybody for all your comments. Um, I appreciate everything that everyone is doing. Yes, thank you. Can you please let us know about okay. any further stuff going on? Taylor, I'm curious, because I'm sure you have some insight into where E.B. Hyde stands on this, um, and I don't fully understand the ownership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like Maybe like the Cliff Stones version. We pay the whole property tax on the property that's sent to us from the town of Woodbury mm -hmm. in the past 70 years. And the Hardwick Electric Department has a claim on the land as well with their hydro in and around the dam. Mm -hmm. mainly. So we actually went in April and tried to sit down with the commissioners to talk about this because we've been trying to deal with this for years. And then in the 90s, they got lawyers involved and fell apart because the Hardwick Electric Department lawyer ended up in jail. But so in, in April, we tried to meet with the commission and they said they weren't ready to meet. So it always, it's always kicked down the road. Mm -hmm. But we offered the commission to sit down at any point, mm -hmm. the Hardwick Electric Department commission. Because the commissioners, from what we were told, make the decision. It's not the foreman in the field. Um, what he says, I don't know about that. Well, <laughs> that's what we were told by the uh, In theory. <laughs> so Taylor, from yeah. your from your standpoint, since you guys both have some claim to the property, is it legal for them to throw up a gate well, like they did? They can protect it uh, again. Yeah. It's interpretation of the deed. I yeah. I mean, the, the lady well, we was asking well. about a legal, but there's not, I mean, it's not that easy. Yeah, I don't want to comment that, but yeah, they can't control it. <laughs> if they believe, you know, what happened to the dam when it breached, 
Mm. It, it deteriorated where there was the campfire. That's where it really mm -hmm. dug. Mm. And that's where they had to fix. And in mm. the parking lot. That's mm -hmm. where the water went. Mm. So it went right over the dam. Yeah. And you know, it, it really, really turned. Yeah. yeah. Right the yeah. Mm. Fifteen mm. years ago or more, I can't remember how long ago it was, there was um, issues with the uh, safety and the quality of the dam. And there was a local community group um, that gathered together and came up with $350,000 to repair that dam. If Hardwick Electric didn't pay for any of it. They did oversee the work that was done. Um, so uh, there is, has been some community commitment to having both the pond and the dam still there. Um, and I think, in a way, I feel that that should be honored, too. Mm -hmm. um, and some people from Hardwick contributed. To it. Yes, many mm -hmm. people from Hardwick and mm -hmm. other towns and people really? who live in California. And I think Hardwick mm -hmm. Electric did put a little money into it. Can yeah, I, I think they did too. Can yeah. I also okay. ask, right. did the CCC build it originally? No. It, that, who built it? It was, I don't know, the Woodbury Granite Company. Yeah. Originally built in 1906. Okay, I knew it was way back. Yeah. At yeah. least according to Steve Ellis's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 1928. That's they when used the hydro. To swim. Yeah. People's hydro bio. It's going to end up being the building already. Okay. Yeah. Andrew knows me, Kelly. Yeah, I know. I knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Were you in her kids? They used to drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that old. Right, well, thanks, thanks for that. You're <laughs> not that young. <laughs> I remember as a kid that they used to drain the water, not all of the water, but they would let down East Long and Nichols to help keep the water flow up for the hydropower that they had. Mm -hmm. So assuming somebody, whether it's Hardwick Electric or EB High, pays liability insurance coverage for the property. I don't property. know what they do with their dams. Mm. That's their dam. It's yeah. their hydro yeah. business. So but I, still, I it's a really huge mean. liability when you would think so. The well, everything they in with children and it's a liability. It's been asked and so yeah. I mean, it is, but no one has been hurt, and it's yeah, not that organized. And the the electric department has liabilities all over the place, so right. you know that's a, I'm sure they have. one of their. Least, I, I have there. four kids, and I've brought them up there their entire lives. What's I your name? Tracy Hayden. Okay. I actually met my husband there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I got reintroduced with my dad's family there when I was old enough to go back after oh. a long time. Like, yeah. they all go swimming. My entire dad's side goes swimming up there. My kids go swimming up there. My nine-year-old, she wears her life vest every time she gets in the water. Everybody's with her. Everybody watches her. Like, it's just a wonderful place to go and take mm -hmm. your kids. And but your kids, I'm just saying personally, your kids have to jump in, right? No. No, there is no, a little no, place to walk in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. One yeah. you jump in and the oh. other you can walk in. Oh, and okay. like there are some women that um would use it. The rocks are low this year and the mm -hmm. water is high. Huh? But they like to go in and swim. Mm -hmm. Um you know, they're fighting disabilities and things yeah. like that. And they drive them. right up. Huh. And uh you know, get help to go in and oh. things. Mm. The gate is the most nuisance to our family because we love to paddleboard and we can't really do that on Caspian and stuff because the boats and they flip us over and oh, yeah. <laughs> so like and I just barely we just got our nine year old a brand new paddleboard this year for her birthday and she's just taken off with it up there oh. and now we gotta carry it down in. That's mm. not easy. I have one. <laughs> I wouldn't want to carry it from the top. No. Yeah. I carry three. I don't know <laughs> if it, I don't know who knows, but there's really no other place place to swim in the Hardwick. Um, they used to swim mm -hmm. in Mackville, okay, and they would still drop, do. drop we still uh, do. I still want to sand <laughs> in at the dam uh, end. No, we're yeah, we still on the bridge, yeah. Right. Um, the other end, my daughter did try, leeches. Oh. Um, and it's mm. really mucky. Yeah. So the only other place would be the end of the dam, mm. and that is kind mm -hmm. of... Also, no go. It looks the, really challenging, but yes. Yeah. Um, so there's mm -hmm. no other place. Mm -hmm. well, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's also a public safety issue where you know where they where they put that chain um, is right at the end of the last camp, and the only way people get down there, uh, is they drive there and they see the gate, and they, they can't go any further, mm -hmm. and 
cars and vehicles can stack up, and some people have been arrayed already, and um, mm. and it and they can back up the road as they have before, and, and block block the camps and mm. block emergency vehicles if they need access and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's not a good situation, and if it's a town road and they they should you know they have to protect the dam now, let the grass grow back and all that, and that's for sure. But um, but uh, the rest of it is up to the board what they want to do about it. But you guys haven't decided what the road is. But even so, I mean, our our property hypothetically would stop where the gate is anyway, so it does. It's not. No, a, it's not. That's not true. It's not true. That's not true. No? Oh lordy. There's lots of there's lots of maps. I've got <laughs> a ton the of maps that shows issue. the road going way beyond where that old guy, that Myron, actually showed. Yeah, where they used to walk. And who? I mean, it's been a hundred years, and no one's done the research to determine what happened between when Myron Ashley gave the right of way for the new road and today. So, I mean, there was some research. There's all the yeah, Russell Deming surveys that do show those roads, and that was from about 20 years ago. So he does a, he was a good researcher, but his, his research was not just to prove that point. <laughs> it like a lot would be answered if he had on Lucian Avery. Uh, would be answered by, by if somebody did that research. That yeah, right, but that's expensive, and that's really expensive. Do you so. have to do, this is my ignorance, do you have to do that with professionals? You Well, to get a survey, you do, and if we had to go, if we ended up going to court, someone would have to pay for that. Yeah. But. but it seems like it would be best if we can just come up with something that works for everyone, rather yeah. than, you know, try to prove something We're all willing that's going to be hard. Us. Mm. For sure. Mm -hmm. At least for how we can control it. That's. <laughs> well, also, if I mean, going to court, of course, is quite expensive. But even if somebody did like thorough research, somebody who's trained in research, mm -hmm. that itself could pull up a lot of things that, that could just educate all of us and could inform the conversation. There is one camp owner on Nichols that's very knowledgeable about roads. He's a surveyor. Um, his name is, um, uh oh. Stephen Frazier. Stephen Frazier. Um, <laughs> and he knows quite a bit about roads. Um, he accesses the pond from a different road because um, he's on the back side. On that, yeah. Uh, um, and think? we do, our old town lawyer, um, Paul Gillis, who I don't know, even know if he's still alive, mm -hmm. but he, he is a, loves to research historical law. Well, uh, he his, would probably not do it for his free. His partner is. Now our attorney. Yes. So, and he has he has given us his opinion. Mm -hmm. Paul has. No, uh, well, Michael, Michael Parent. Has. Yeah. Okay. And his opinion was that it was a public road, probably, but he needed a surveyor to actually do the research, right? That. Well, he suggested that if we did have to go to court, we would have to get a surveyor because the lawyer can't testify as to facts in court. So, but if can, we can, can I? This is going to maybe sound stupid. I was the census person down in amongst the camps. Um, they didn't say anything to me about it being private road or anything like yeah, that. Does that? I, I don't think I mean, I, people I were it. aware of this situation until recently. Yeah. Mm. So, okay, any, anything else? I mean, we obviously still have a lot of questions, but if anybody wants to have, did, did you want to say anything? Me? Yeah. No. No? That's, that's not why you're here? <laughs> no, I'm just here to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess the, the, the main point is we really need to just have a conversation with Harvard yeah. Electric. Yeah. I think the group that Lydia is yes. suggesting mm -hmm. is a, is a, a good person. Mm -hmm. Good first step, yeah. and then meeting, trying to have something organized to present to the commissioners at their August meeting. That's but as far as whether the road is the town's or private, that's just something we're going to have to decide. And then people can work on making it all nice for everybody. I mean, I think what Norman, no, what the goal that Norman suggested to us is, I certainly agree with that 100%, it would be nice to get all the parties together and try to solve this problem mm -hmm. or, um, 
together, but Harvard and maybe Harvard Electric would be willing to do that. I would hope that they might. I did it at that meeting, the commissioners meeting, I did invite commissioners to come to the select board meeting, but they said they couldn't speak for the group um, mm. outside of their, and if two of them came, although there's more than two meetings, <laughs> it would be three, I guess, you know, mm. the, the whole open meeting rules. Um, so, but a couple of them could have come. Um, well, they could always watch it on HCTV right. and nobody would <laughs> know. <laughs> it's it's hard to hear some of those. <laughs> It sounds like Lydia has a lot to offer as far as experience with this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So my thought is we should all email her at the email address that she gave and mm -hmm. maybe like kind of let her take the lead because um, it sounds like it's something that she's been doing and that's awesome if she wants to help mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it's also true that uh, I say the majority of the users of the pond uh, Really, are people that come with their boats and get on the pond instead of just hanging, you know, mm -hmm. at, at the dam. So mm -hmm. they're not represented. But if the word gets out to them as well, because that's, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what we've seen. Really, most of the people they go fishing and they go, you know, and they get their boats in at the dam. Yeah, yes. Motor motorboats or no, 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 no motorboats. Well, motor occasionally a small motorboat, but and fish and wildlife. You know, they were years ago. They were looking for a. a boat access mm -hmm. on Nichols and um, a former camp owner used to relate a story of having a conversation with them just telling them that the dam is what people use to access mm -hmm. the pond with their boats and so Fish and Wildlife sort of accepted that as kind of an mm -hmm. unofficial um, boating access. So mm -hmm. I would be very curious to see what their comments we, we are. We talked to Fish and Game because they came to us. Do they, they stock? Fish fish right? still? They still yeah. stock it but their issue is you're not allowed to swim in a That's a true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're like people can't swim, but you can go. So the state doesn't mm -hmm. have swimming access. I mean, they have beaches and stuff like that, but they don't. The game warden goes down there to protect wildlife or mm -hmm. check your license, and mm -hmm. that's what his role would be. But he can't stop fires, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can't enforce. The but they're on a lease thing. They, they you know, leased piece of property right here. Right here. The game warden can enforce other things than just fish and wildlife though. Mm -hmm. That is an interesting solution yeah. if that was a state. Yeah. Well, some sort of like maybe a carry-in boat thing or something. Maybe they do beaches or something. If it's the order to pay yeah, yeah. 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 Like an ordinance yeah. on the use of the road, the use of the dam, um, I think fish and the game wardens could enforce that. But we would have to come up with some kind of agreed upon yeah. Um, yeah. Document. Like I said, they you want the parties at the table if we're looking for a solution. That's yeah. all they did. Uh, they, they kind of like what's happening now because people do have access, and that's what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And even though they don't own it, um, so maybe there's a way to work something out that's a little different from the standard way they do things. Mm -hmm. And they can enforce the rules and, and helpful statutes as well. So mm -hmm. if they're working in place, mm -hmm. that's what Dustin said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if there was a law that says you can't <coughs> be drinking beer at the beach at the stand there after eight o'clock, I mean, what kind of a law could there be? Well, you know, <laughs> How could you enforce that? Well, that's yeah, always the uh, if there was an yeah. ordinance, an you ordinance. Could enforce it. I mean, it's not the drinking of the beer; it's the blasting of the truck stereo. Well, that yeah, but moves out over the whole the pond. nuisance ordinance or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. I mean, well, that's all something that would have to be figured out. Right. So we're not going to do it tonight. No. So, okay. Yeah, thank you. Another okay, any more? Arbic electric electrified fence after 18 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. you know, they did it with a oh, yeah. 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 We're going to have a good beach. Thank you. <laughs> Right, thank you all for your Thank time. you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Now we got a lot to Okay, so here we are. Let's see. Six. Oh, we're not that not that far behind. Yeah, uh, the clock. I looked at the clock. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's why. So that's what we're That's we're done with Nichols. I think we are. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, we'll talk about it in our executive session because it is a. Pending litigation, possibly. Well, we always send we were we always send out to the commission, but they never. Uh, again, it's wide open. The commission come talk to us. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've been good. talking to them for oh, years. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Dale. So, Road Commissioner's Report. We are still fighting the flood. Yeah. We're just, um, I'm in hopes of starting on the two bridges tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Temporary bridges. Uh, we've been filling a lot of the washouts on Cabot Road today in East Hill. Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit more to do on East Hill and that portion is done. And we're kind of narrowing it down to three large projects, which are two of the bridges and then we have a four foot culvert on the county road. Uh, I've got the culvert in. I ordered it. It's here. I just got to go and put it in. But the big excavator that we're using, I need for the bridges. So I'm trying to get the bridges done first. Because hmm. I see those as being more important for people's access. Um, and the county road is passable one way? way. It's passable, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not pretty, but it's yeah. passable. Um, so, but once we get. Once we free up the big excavator, we'll take, take that out mm -hmm. and put that bigger culvert in. Mm -hmm. And pretty it up. How many of your um, <coughs> crew have to work on the bridges? Um, there'll be different stages of that. Okay, so they'll be bringing yeah, in material. So they'll be bringing material and they'll be, they'll also be, I mean, uh, most of them will continue working on the washouts on East Hill. Mm -hmm. And I and one other one probably will be on the bridge mm -hmm. until I get ready to set mm -hmm. the bridge, and then mm -hmm. I may have to have two different machines mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. to do that. Um, um, I wish so, there would yeah. be someone there with a camera and film the whole thing. Anybody? You can go. HCTV. Yeah, I don't have a good camera. I don't have a movie camera. <laughs> well, yeah, HCTV. Right. <laughs> I mean, we can take pictures yeah. that, you know, still pictures. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you know, it's not um, It's It's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Mm. I, I, I'm not sure myself, but... Mm. Uh, In other words, he doesn't want video on <laughs> I truthfully, I would rather not. Uh, but yeah. we'll make it happen, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certain. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, we've, we've pulled a lot of riprap out of the quarry. They've been very generous with that. And when you say generous, are they giving it to you? The riprap is free of charge. Oh, they said we load it, we have it. It's ours. Okay. It's their waste product and mm -hmm. it's in their way. They're happy so to get rid of it. They're oh. happy to get rid of it. So that's helped us dramatically as far as fixing the big washouts in the roads. How about the small stuff, the ground up stuff, what do you call it, the crushed? Crushed. The crushed, <laughs> yep, the, uh, the two inch minus, that is not free. Yeah. We are going to have to pay for that, mm -hmm. I believe, at, at, at some point, in, the, yeah. in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, clearly FEMA will help us with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're, so far they're, they told us we could have half of the pile that's there. <coughs> Jeez, um, that's so a mountain. It's it, it looks bigger than it really <laughs> okay. is, you know. <laughs> it'll but, go down so fast. the half that they're going to give us is going to run out. Yeah. It'll, it'll run out. We took a lot out wow. today. Um, you know, each truck today, just today, each truck mm -hmm. took 20, 21 loads mm -hmm. in one day. Wow. So mm -hmm. it goes fast, particularly mm -hmm. because we were working right there on Cabot Road. So oh. the trucks were running mm -hmm. back and forth, uh -huh. and then uh, mm -hmm. to East Hill. But I'm to the point where I want to try to finish things off. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, we were trying to, we were just fixing enough to get people through. But now I want to get it to where it's a finished product so I can put it behind me and go to the next. Because mm -hmm. we still have a lot of damage out and around. Yeah, um, little pits here and there. Are, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but the bridges are my priority for mm -hmm. this week, mm -hmm. those two bridges. Chris's bridge is already in. Is that Chris's right? bridge is in. That's yep. great. Mm -hmm. yep. How did that go? Um, it was interesting. Cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I worked by myself on that one. That was a private project. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And uh, but it went well. 
the wits in. He was able mm. to cross it um, that night. Mm. That'll be a pro for the other two, right? Because you've done one. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Yes. I learned from mistakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, no. Things. Of course, every, every each one of these bridges are mm -hmm. a little bit different. Uh -huh. You know, size, depth, mm -hmm. of, you know, water, materials mm -hmm. that's there I could use. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chris's, there was no material there. There was no big stones that I could use. Mm. So I ended up, have, I brought in some concrete blocks to build build it up mm. so the bridge could set on. Um, these other, the other two sites have material there left over from the, mm -hmm. the existing structure. Mm -hmm. So it should go easier. Plus you've done it before. And I've got yeah. some experience now. <laughs> <Right. so. laughs> Yeah, and the bridges are both in place. They're di they're there on site, so we don't have to handle them. They're right mm -hmm. there, and should go fairly quickly. Is my hopes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. You must be happy, Carol. Yes, I'm very happy. Yes. Thank you, Lizzie, also for <laughs> yeah. the temporary walking bridge. You uh, you don't know this, but I went to the wrong place to give them a temporary bridge. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so, so we also, uh, maybe at the last meeting, we had a request to lower the stream bed in Buck Lake Brook, and uh, Chris agreed that we should do that, but I had, well, I was told to, had to go to the stream engineer mm -hmm. to get permission to work in the stream, and so I made the contact, and he came out on Friday. And he instructed me to look at our restrictions because that is a FEMA buyout already. To look and see whether there are any deed restrictions about what we can do there. And um, I think uh, the thing that concerns me is there's a deed restriction that says that we can't go back for any more FEMA money. Which is is that right in the village here? Yeah. Well. <laughs> and so, so, anyway, that was in the in one of the deed restrictions, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, they pulled the end of the project, so we never got to finish the stream right, repair. Right, that was what initiated. Right, the exactly. So, anyways, hopefully they they won't. <laughs> uh, Where is this brook located? Right in the brook village. Lake here. The the brook Lake FEMA brook. grant that we got was originally to... The one that comes down Cabot Road, is that the one we're yeah, talking about? One, yeah, right, okay. right in the village. It goes under mm -hmm. Fort, Route mm -hmm. 14. Mm -hmm. um, the original purpose of that grant was to fix the flooding issue, the ch the mm -hmm. uh, bottlenecking underneath the store, mm -hmm. and then um, and then FEMA told us that, well, um, we can't really do anything about that in this grant because we can't see it because the store is over it. So then all of the mm -hmm. work really mm -hmm. was and the grant money was we had, for... <clears throat> there, there was a part of the grant, um, we had like a $30,000 in there for uh, the design work for the restoration of the stream bank, and that's mm -hmm. when they, they pulled it at the very end, because uh, I don't know why. I couldn't find, I looked through the, some of that old stuff today, and I couldn't find in writing where they had done that. But anyways, as far as now, um, I think they will allow us to take two feet out of there. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if by the time Alfie has a, an excavator that's not busy, maybe it will have stopped raining and maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe Chris's uh, or maybe uh, Jake's basement won't be flooded anymore. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I, I, I do have a big question, an uh, overarching question for the whole town. When I read this, uh, reduce the uh, stream bed on Buck Lake, you know, my hair stood up on my head. Yeah, well, I did. Let's go okay. up the road. That's where the water, the water field is right up there. My beaver dam did not breach. Mm -hmm. It held back. If it did, this would have been a worse scenario. The ground mm -hmm. was like a sponge everywhere. It just couldn't mm -hmm. hold it anymore. It's mm -hmm. not just me. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I read this, I thought, oh my God, they're going to come up yeah. and they're going to rip. No, no, I, that was. The engineer. Maybe it was poorly worded, but I only meant this 
one section okay, that Jake asked about. Okay, that's to me until yeah. just now. Yeah, yeah cause I have all kinds of ideas. put the meets and bounds on there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to break it up. A federal FEMA oh. person or was it the state? Yeah, FEMA the, FEMA uh, the river engineer was yeah. a state guy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if we could remind them that that original grant, that the purpose... Oh, I will. I will. Okay. I already started my email to Stephanie Smith. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because they never, you know, they never allowed us to... And maybe if I just submit it, maybe they won't even remember that. Yeah. But I don't want to go to jail because I said you shall not even apply. Mm. <laughs> Carol. She had another question. I mean, the engineer is looking at downtown, right? Is that engineer going to walk up and look at my site? Because we don't want this to happen again. And I really like what Chris had to say. Let's do it right this time. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the big picture. What I was told, um, and I, this is just out of my own spin on all of this, mm -hmm. maybe my water needs to be diverted in a, in a culvert, uh, concrete chase put there at the head of where all this water is coming down through town. And that's that's why I got a little alerted because when you reduce that, you can, you can't just reduce it down here. It's coming from up there. Right? So the, yeah, this is the long term after yes. I forget the Paul was talking about the three phases. There's the emergency phase and then there's fixing up and then there's long term mitigation oh. afterwards. So that'll happen long after you get your temporary bridge. Sure. Okay. Uh, there there will be, for your bridge, when we go to put a temp, uh, permanent bridge there, there will be engineers okay. crawling mm -hmm. around. Absolutely. That's right. That mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for clarity. Skip? Has the state indicated whether or not they're going to replace the culvert under Route 14? <laughs> I haven't was, been in touch with them. That was any part of the original project. I know. So it was. They were going to replace the, the double culvert with one large mm -hmm. single one, mm -hmm. which would have mitigated some of the flooding this mm -hmm. time in the village. Mm -hmm. But that didn't occur. Of course, they, they, the guy who wrote that, long, that letter probably retired years ago. Yeah. My, yes. my memory of that, um, Skip, was that I think I remember back when we were in District 7, um, Shauna Clifford mentioning that they were actually um, had started a FEMA grant to replace that culvert. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're in District 6. I have no idea mm -hmm. what's going on with well, that. I'll find out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because there really should be an overall plan. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. cannot be one. Yes. And at the time they mentioned, you know, once it goes under Route 14, there's the um, post office and then there's the house and there's a constriction there with those granite blocks, with a number of them that wash away mm -hmm. with this flood. Sure. Um, you know, and they were saying, you know, if we're going to widen the culvert under Route 14, we really need to widen that swath down. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's a big widen. project, to, but it... Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Yeah. That might be necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Flood repair update. Nothing else? No. Uh, unless there's questions. No highway. Chris, are you still with us? Is he gone? Mm, no, I think he's there. Oh, yeah, screens. Just. Yep. I think he's gone. I think he's gone, huh? Oh. Uh, let, let me just see the laptop and we'll see if something happens. That was kind of quiet. <laughs> he's still in the wait. He's in the waiting room, so oh. let's get it back. Mm. I need my glasses. <laughs> All right. Um. Sorry, Chris. there but he's not there so Chris if you can hear me we we um, have admitted you back into the meeting I'm not sure what happened but anyway so maybe um, 
You know what? I think I'll just have it right he here, it there. and then I can see when he's there and not mm -hmm. there. Whether so, I'm not sure what happened. But. Okay. So next on the agenda is a FEMA update. Uh, Paul couldn't be here, but uh, we were talking last time about hiring someone to do all the paperwork that's going to be involved and perhaps in, in being uh, involved with mitigation projects down the road. And I believe we might have found... Hey Chris, you're back in. <laughs> you're back in the meeting, Chris. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm kind of watching it so if you do get knocked out of the meeting again, I can get you back in. Well, I don't know how long you were gone because you were facing out towards the folks that are there. It's, it's been a, it's been a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, Thank you for helping me out. Yeah. So as I was starting to say, I think we might have a volunteer to take us through that awful process. Yeah. <laughs> you might be in the room right now. <laughs> and it's not Norman, because he's already applied for something else. Yes, as I said, my email to you. Be yeah. happy to do it. Great. Happy. Thank you. I'm That's happy. Awesome. Yeah. That's not what Norm said last well, time, under duress. No. <laughs> Norm wasn't happy? He is now. He loves it. He's smiling. <laughs> well, all I can say is thank you very much. We'll negotiate some kind of a fair contract, or you can just do your usual public spirited yeah, self. No contract. No contract. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank That's you awesome. so much. Thank you. Yeah. So I started today. Oh. In anticipation that I might be roped mm -hmm. into this. <laughs> and so, I, I wish with, I could be so powerful. <laughs> I met with FEMA in Hardwick. Whoa. And because uh, they had a kiosk mm -hmm. in Hardwick along with the uh, Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And I talked to the, uh, the lead gentleman there, and it was only for Caledonia County. So he gave me the name of the division supervisor for Washington County, mm -hmm. and I have a call set up with him tomorrow because I need to know really you know, how to start. Mm -hmm. So I have some information about developing a damage inventory and uh, we'll have to get together out you yep. right away. And also Robin, because of the damage to uh, the town offices. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we did get Paul involved as well. Yes, yeah, to the volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. We've already started putting one together. Yeah. So. The inventory sheet that I pulled off the FEMA website is a 16-column spreadsheet. Mm. And it has certain acronyms that you have to use, and certain project IDs, account IDs, oh, yeah. things of that nature that you have to be sure you fill in correctly, or it'll bounce right back. Similarly, there are timesheets that have to be filled out, types of equipment that are being used, uh, names, oh pictures, anything that we have that can buttress our, our projects and our, hopefully, our payments back mm -hmm. from FEMA. So, Alfie, when you have a chance, you come up for air. Uh, I need probably an hour with you just to go over some of the stuff that's required. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I might like keep a track of all the loads of material, where, they, where it goes, how many loads for each, each site. Yeah. And there's loads of pictures around from different. Okay. For and Brandy, Brandy sent me, I don't know, several documents today too to get me started as well. Yeah. Will they? Will be able to provide an equipment schedule, or an do we make the schedule? How much we can charge for each hour on each piece of equipment? I don't believe they do that. Not from what I read so far. Yeah. And I, this is I'm like four hours yeah. into the mission here. Yeah. You know, so. I think they did that in at least. One other project. Where I have a V-Trans. I think we went to the state. The state. Oh. Yeah. We'll give you, right, they have a, a list for oh. each machine, yeah. what, yeah. Is, what its yeah. value is oh. per hour. Well, I have a timesheet here. Okay. 
Are you going to submit your first time No, because it's, this is a <laughs> And it's total hours and hourly rate. So I'm presuming just looking at the hourly rate, it's what your regular hourly rate might be. Okay. Yeah. Not okay. including benefits? What your regular hourly rate is. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's a loaded rate. Mm -hmm. How do you calculate? Your fringes are included in your hourly gross. So how is it really? Yeah. Oh, That's good. a benefit. Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And then your overtime rate as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys get time enough. Oh yeah. Or yeah. double time. And I can sit down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll save copies of timesheets that okay. are overtime that mm -hmm. the guys worked on. And I can make these so you can fill them out electronically, which would save me a lot of time from. Trying to figure out. <laughs> well, I'm glad it helps you. <laughs> there was a gentleman at the last meeting that had some. Yeah. Like, um, who the heck is that? And Jonah. Yeah. Who is that? Yeah. Who is that? He's got something going Jonah on. Beach, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was for. That was going to be for people to report to the town. Right. Damages. Because the town has to keep a tally, and that somehow helps determine how what percentage of we get from FEMA. Yeah. I don't really yeah. understand well, that. I took that's it what it was that had nothing to do with FEMA. It was just for residents to mm -hmm. report incidents. Yeah, but why? I mean, what's the end use of that report? Uh, I think I, it somehow goes to some kind of total. But I don't know. Well, 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 there, there, there is some entity that is working with local homeowners, property owners, right. with their for their own damage. Right. Well, yeah, and they can. They do have to go through the two one one dot org and all that. But this right. thing that Jonah was working on with Chris. That was the idea. Was that. Jonah's idea was to have that as a clearinghouse so that people, they did report two on one, but that we had an archive of damage for the town. Because oftentimes we look back and we don't have a record. And so that was really for us. It doesn't mean that it can't be used potentially to help skip with, with the FEMA documentation that he's working on now. Um, I think it would be good if it could be Jonah maybe talk. Yeah, I'll talk with Jonah. Thanks, Kim. <coughs> Danielle Levalara, she lives up off Foster Hill Road. Mm -hmm. She was helping at the fire department when we got in, and she was keeping a track of all of this stuff. And I don't know exactly what what the goal was, but I know that she's willing to help, and she's really good at stuff like that. Um, and she's mm -hmm. happy to do it. So I don't know if she'd be someone that sure. we would partner if with. She has, if she has an inventory. Yeah. Um, I don't. She was she was listing stuff for the fire department, so that would be. I have Where that you inventory and go to use it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'm just going to say all the help we can get is going to be mm -hmm. very worth it here because there's a. I mean, I've dealt with FEMA before and it is a lot, a lot of paper, it's a lot of keeping track of everything, every expense, every. Mm -hmm. So any you know any help that we can get with that is, I'm going to certainly welcome it. I have one more question for you, Alfie. I mean, the town's responsible for my damage, correct? My bridge, my bridge. That's all. I don't have any personal property. But I have documentation. I don't know if anybody else has done it, but I followed that. Would you like that, Skip? Sure. Oh. But do, you didn't do it. Do you what? Document. I have pictures of that. That's all I have. Uh, of oh, after the fact? Yes. Okay, I have it while it was going down. Oh yeah, I got movies. I got movies. <laughs> no, <laughs> yours is probably more valuable than mine. <laughs> but uh, yes, mm -hmm. anything like that. I mean, anything is going to be just going to love to see. Okay, for sure, it's going to mm -hmm. be very helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, we're already registered in a government entity called SAM.gov, which is <laughs> System Awards Management, and we were that we were <clears throat> registered when we were doing getting rid of the old mm. store mm. in order to get some FEMA reimbursement. So the yeah. town is still an active participant in Sam Bikov. And I think I'm the contact for the town Brindies, second contact 
Uh, I've been getting emails from them, but I haven't really looked at them. And you're, you're the tertiary comment. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you like it or not, we can change that to a member of the select board. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you did that. I mean, thank goodness you don't have to go through that again. Well, it would be easier the second time. I would want to continue with that. No, um, not, really, with not really, to be honest with you. Not really, to be honest with you, but. Um, I mean, once we have the number, there's more, more well, to do. I think what Skip is saying that, you know, when they do send out notices or whatever, that it should mm -hmm. go to people who are concerned about it. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking Diana should be the uh, mm -hmm. third contact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, delete. Would you, go ahead, would, would you go ahead and make me the tertiary? Yeah, I sure. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Let's <laughs> start Diana then. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do it, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it, Skip. That way I see those and I can attend to them and that will help me because I'm also a contact for Norm with his project. Okay. And I won't be in Quebec forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Mm -hmm. I hope not. Thank you very much, Skip. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Skip. Mm -hmm. huh, so we don't have to do the job description. Shall we move on to Valley Lake Curve Realignment? Fine for me. <laughs> We have, uh, do you have your list of things that they... No, I could not find it, but okay, I well, have read one. it. <laughs> These are the, uh, from the landowners, the list of things that have to be dealt with. You want to go over them, Dave? I don't have it right in front of me. Oh, jeez. Um, I didn't make you a copy. Do you like this one? I can just read it. If, you know. Sure, you're welcome to read it, and I share it with Alfie. And, and yeah. Alfie met uh, kindly with Lauren, yeah. myself, to okay. to talk things through. So, okay. um, yeah, we're absolutely understanding that the flood may hold mm -hmm. up the work this mm -hmm. summer. It totally depends on mm -hmm. when you come up for air. And um, we understand that this is a public safety issue, and so despite the fact that we're going to lose some meadow, et cetera, we're going to get out of the way and let the town do what it needs to do because it's one of the most dangerous pieces of road I've ever seen anywhere. So um, it makes sense that you want to adjust it, and we just want to make sure that it's done in a way that is legally sound and doesn't come back to bite us. No, the first, the first. Uh note here is that the Valley Lake rerouting project is a one-to-one -one land swap between current landowner and the town of Woodbury and that's not exactly true I mean it's just a, it's a right-of-way right no problem it's uh yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all on your land right. just taking a road off one section and putting it on the other section and making it nice for everybody the current roadway will be restored to a natural condition with sufficient topsoil to support healthy, timely forest regrowth, not plants associated, you know, so you don't want like Japanese knotweed and stuff in there. No, <laughs> we got plenty of that in town. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. free. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, I'm just wondering if there should be the formal process of discontinuing the section of road that is going to not be a road anymore and a formal. Uh, laying out of the road so that, that a future landowner couldn't dispute what happened there mm. and say, hey, I want mm. the road put back where it was mm. before. Yeah. It has to be. He's yeah. in current use now. Please. It has to be. Uh, yes, please. After we, we have what we're going through right now with <laughs> Nickel Pond. Yeah. Is, yeah. We have to make this as concrete as possible. Mm -hmm. The uh, town of Woodbury will take responsibility for the project workplace management, including ensuring that personnel are appropriately authorized to carry out the work, and town insurance will cover any injury or equipment failure that may occur. Um, 
Any necessary culverts or water catchment areas will be situated on the new town right of way. Lengthening the driveway as little as possible to achieve goals, preserving the existing meadow to the extent possible. Preserve safe and easy access to the meadow that the new road will cross. I guess that would be like a little driveway or something. Or, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's sort of a farm farm road, something that they Owners. can still access. With. Yeah. Owners must be assured that this land swap will not result in punitive costs and or back taxes owed related to Vermont current use program. Appropriate state officials and provide written approval for the land swap. If additional mapping or forester work is required, the town shall pay for these expenses. Cost estimates will be presented to the town prior to work commencement. So have you hired, have you talked to your forester about? Absolutely. Work? Yeah. Talked to the forester, couldn't reach the county forester because he's helping with wildfires in Quebec. No. Oh. <laughs> this is a summer of many problems. Yeah, it? really. Um, but we reached the tax specialist mm -hmm. for the tax specialist for the Current, current use, use program. Yeah. His name is Nick, and I've mm -hmm. given his coordinates to Alfie, and he's told us exactly what we need to do in terms of um, filing this form and then mm -hmm. that form um, mm -hmm. before the uh, the town gets started with the mm -hmm. project. Basically, to disenroll mm -hmm. the land that you're taking mm -hmm. for the right of way. Mm -hmm. and then to enroll the old, mm -hmm. what is now the old road bed. Mm -hmm. And the disenrollment must happen, it's a 314 LV or something, before you start work on that land, mm -hmm. he says, so that they have noticed mm -hmm. that, the, that it's coming out of current use. Okay. And then the other crucial deadline we know at this point from our forester is September 1. If you all are going to do this project this summer, by September 1, our forester, who works with Red Start, Marcus Bradley is his name, would have to file a formal application for the disenrollment and the re-enrollment process. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you guys decide, if you all decide to go forward with it, I assume Alfie will let us know and, mm -hmm. and we'll just work with you to make that happen. Mm -hmm. An official right. deed and right-of-way transfer must be recorded, which it would be. The town of Woodbury shall right. pay any related expenses, including assistance by the landowner's attorney. Cost estimates would be presented to the town. Right. Prior to work commencement. And we have those now as well. Oh, okay. So the lawyer says um, she would require, this is Gloria Rice of Rice and Riley Montpelier, estimated $500 mm -hmm. to review whatever deed mm -hmm. or easement work the mm -hmm. town is going to put into the books mm -hmm. for the swap. Yeah. And the forester's work would probably be in the neighborhood of about $300. Mm -hmm. That's adjusting the map for the forestry and then submitting the application by September. Oh, that's give or take. So mm -hmm. that's what we know at, at this point. Okay. Right. So as far as laying out the road, we have a survey. Okay. And we have um, a preliminary survey. That's the only one I've seen. Is that yes? yes. Preliminary. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So as far as laying out the road, that would be uh, sufficient for that. Then somebody just has to write up the yeah. Yeah. The, the survey or put ribbons up. Yeah at the center of the road, of the mm -hmm. new road location. Mm -hmm. So that's enough for me to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I also have a copy of that survey, which I will send to the forester, because he emailed me asking for that, and that will help oh. him with his. Okay. So essentially, I think the select board just needs to approve the expenses mm -hmm. uh, of what's on that paper, which is, mm -hmm. it sounds like, pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. for the, the scope of this work and the benefit mm -hmm. that it's yeah, going to give to the, mm -hmm. to the traveling public mm -hmm. as well as the plow trucks going up and down that road. Yeah, well we approved the project before yeah. I think. But anyways, yeah, we could do that. I'd make a motion that we approve the these expenses for uh, doing the legal and paperwork. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. <laughs> Diana, does that include the, uh, is Woodbury's attorney going to prepare the whatever deed or easement cost? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. yeah. yeah. And he, he could also figure kind out of officiate the formal laying out and just right. continuing a little yeah. too. So that'll be good. Mm -hmm. And one more question if I could. Alfie, I know that what Forrester needs is some kind of a shape file 
so he can measure the amount of land, not just the drawing survey which I gave him, but well, yeah, I don't know that I have. All right, that. the, the surveyor. He yeah, the surveyor. Does He's happy to reach directly out to the surveyor. Yeah, she's also. Uh, right. She she probably knows what that. Yeah. Yeah, you're she, she, okay. Lisa Jeanette shifting. did the survey. <coughs> Lisa Jeanette yes. did the survey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I so think our forester has reached out to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she should be able to provide anything that he needs. Okay. Yeah. Do we know whether it's going to happen this summer? Or are we still playing that by year? Uh, we are still hoping for it. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, I know these big projects are going to take up a lot of my time right now. But once the temporary bridges are in, then I'm going back to, you know, the original plan of the okay. summer. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. yes, as of right now, I'm still planning on making that happen. Okay. Yeah. There's no work in the stream, right? There's no stream no. on this at all. No, good. No. It's all, no. yeah. No. Because they no. require that you stop work at a certain time of the year. But yeah, no. Yeah, it's October. Stay away from that. Okay. The Good. new road would affect the stream a lot less than the present road. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Great. So we need to get our attorney involved. Yes, you can. Thank you. You're all very, really nice to be around. Thanks, Carol. You're nice to be around, too. Carol. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Mm. Is there anything else you need from the land owners? Anything else you need us to do? You've done all this work. <laughs> so, I guess. Yeah, just keep in touch if, you okay. know, if, yeah. if there's something that we need to communicate or more documents need to be. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, Put together or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I would just okay. Yeah. And w will we receive the attorney's deed work at some point? I guess. Yeah. Once it's recorded, yeah. you will get the recording copy. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think as far as your forester, I I don't know how the treasurer wants to do it, but it would seem like you would you would pay the bill and then you would get reimbursed. Fine with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, that right. would be, yeah, we, uh, essentially, if we don't get the, the PTTR done before September 1st, there's there's going to be a, a revised bill, but yeah. Okay. And the town, my understanding is that the taking land out of current use means some kind of potential penalty of back taxes, but the if town... It's happening in the same... Right, right. But the, the property tax guy, the tax specialist at current use said that there's a possibility that if the town declares this as an issue of eminent domain, then the town could potentially not have to pay any penalties. But otherwise, I think it's the assessed value, of the, it's 10% of the assessed value of the land. Of that it's little piece. That yeah. tiny strip, yeah. that's right. right. But it's, it's just mm -hmm. a trade, isn't it? It's, it's like... I well, wish. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's because yeah. the property transfer is happening. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. If we're not making the law, we're just going to have to follow it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Figuring out current use is a day-to-day is oh, -day nightmare. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Okay. So, where are we? Local emergency management plan. Okay. So I think I should probably. I'm sorry. I should probably speak to this. Please. Yeah. So um, the, the towns are, are required to have a local emergency management plan that has to be updated every year, um, and it's important because it affects how much. Um, funding the town can get through various programs for some of the flood work and so on. Um, so I um, basically updated this. I, I should, um, well, we'll deal with this first, I guess, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the overall scope of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, so a lot of this is, um, you know, is boilerplate stuff they put out. Um, 
The um, and this is kind of a pretty much well. It's a, it's a draft in in the sense that people can look at it. I, I, there might be some minor changes in phone numbers or some people I had to take them out. But I think this is a, the basic document. Um, that's all I'm looking for. Um, I did email it out today, so unfortunately that's not a lot of time for you to memorize all the aspects of it, but um, there's not a lot of real need to it. Um, the, uh, what's more important is uh, the planning process that will happen to put together a better operations plan. But the, uh, um, but, uh, the select board has to, uh, I guess, vote to adopt it. And, uh, and then I'll get it to Central Mountain Regional Planning and it has to re review it and make sure it complies with all the requirements and approve the plan. And then we'd have a plan in place that uh, will serve the town when they're seeking funding for different different programs mm -hmm. that require that they have a approved plan. I think there's a lot of big mm -hmm. controversies. I, I, I've heard that uh, Kim Silk's no longer the uh, that you do have a constable, so I've got to add that piece in, and uh, mm -hmm. you don't have an animal control officer now, so I take that one out. So there'll mm -hmm. be those two modifications, and it's it's also a living document. I've, I've been at this, you know, a week now, um, so as I learn more, and uh, we may look to you know, amend this and modify it if mm -hmm. as need be. But I think uh, close enough now to be able to put it forward, and people agree. If you're recognizing the name here and there, I think that. <laughs> I'd like to, so I look at it briefly, um, and Norm, thank you for rushing up really quickly and getting it closer to closer to correct. Mm -hmm. With the amendments that you're talking about, um, I'd like to make an motion to to approve this document and move it forward. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Oh, any more questions? Aye. No. no. Okay. So the local emergency management plan is adopted. Thank you for that. Thank uh, you. Uh, the other, uh, other piece of work here is the uh, uh, fiscal sponsor agreement. Um, the, oh, yeah. As we all know, the, the, the fire station that Incurred a little bit of flood damage this year, and it's a yeah. yes, it's a little bit. Anyway, it's mm. a it's a very serious situation that they have to you know pull the station back together before winter to be able to utilize it. Mm. We all know the you know planning on building a new station is certainly not going to they're going to have to use it this winter, mm. and they intend to use it going forward for um, for auxiliary vehicles and so forth. Um, so uh, the Vaughan Community Foundation has. Um, an emergency fund. Uh, it's a small, relatively small amount of money, five thousand dollars. But I said I would uh, work on an application for the fire department to try to access that money mm -hmm. because they're a five hundred one c four nonprofit, which is actually a tax exempt nonprofit where they can accept uh, they can accept uh, tax exempt donations and so on. But the requirements of the the community foundation is that they be five hundred one c threes. So therefore, they'll need a fiscal sponsor, and what that means, uh, it's really uh, a pass-through. Um, the money would flow through the town and to the fire department, pretty much like it already does for other purposes. So it's not nothing too dramatic. Um, it, uh, it's a it's a sponsorship agreement. Um, you've seen it. I've sent it through before. Did anyone else uh, need a copy of it? Uh, take a look. Anyone? So. Um, and it's also, you know, uh, the Woodbury Fund is uh, going to call a meeting and, and mm -hmm. decide if they're going to open another round um, to see, you know, because of all the flood issues and also because we didn't get applications in last round. So we're going to look to do that. Um, and uh, there might be some additional activity there for the fire mm -hmm. department. may not be. The, the, the group hasn't met yet mm -hmm. to decide whether to do the other round. But, it would suffice for that as well, because it, it would be the same grantee. Do you have anything else you want to add for that? My battery is fine. I don't think so. I don't think anybody has any questions. Are you sure? Directly, directly at the fire department. Let me find what I have. Okay. Anyway. 
chance that it would. Yeah. So I, I would like to thank you, Norman, for helping us with this. Yeah, well, no. happy to do it. Okay. Yeah. Actually, if you get the mic. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, it's a lot of paperwork. Um, we don't have that much. Left 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 my battery is running yeah. low. I'm going to run home and get my cord. Yeah, uh, I didn't bring it. Um, yeah, no but it, if things go blank, um, that's what's happened. Okay. Uh, Michael, will this one? Thank you very no much. No problem. I'll rip back. Charge cord. Will this work? We don't have that much more that. to do, not that the no, clerk no, and treasurer no, report exactly. are important, but... Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most important part. <laughs> so, so I, I guess need a motion to uh, enter into the Okay, fiscal. I'll make a motion that we sponsor. approve the fiscal sponsor. I'll second it. Status for Vermont Community Foundation grants to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department. I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so um, thank you. Here's my report here. Um, uh, just a couple things I want to go over. Um, the my role as emergency management director, and I don't know that much from this round, but I do remember from 1999 when I used to, when I did the first plan. Um, mm. Is really uh, the thing is to prepare for emergencies and help during emergencies, and that. Uh, the emergency phase of this is pretty much over, and more of a recovery phase at this point mm -hmm. for uh, the projects. But um, I'm willing to help out on other stuff too, but that's more of a personal volunteer stuff mm -hmm. as opposed to as an emergency management director. So the, the process going forward is going to involve um, the first thing would really be a, a debriefing in terms of what happened over the last two emergencies, really the pandemic mm -hmm. as well as the flood. Mm -hmm to see what worked well and what didn't, and what kind of changes should happen. And then um, probably look to set up a committee, uh, an uh, emergency management planning committee to put together a new operations plan to take a look at what the risks are and, and how to, uh, what mitigation steps should be taken uh, to prevent problems going forward and what steps should be taken in the event of emergencies and put together you know, new quick sheets. We had some quick sheets before that quickly delineated, um, you know, mm -hmm. who should do what. It's a one pager. So, in an emergency, you don't have time to read through a whole. <laughs> so, we're going to be working on that. Um, are there any ARPA dollars left? Has that been spent out, or what's the situation? Any what? ARPA dollars, or have they all been spent? The town's uh, ARPA. Yeah. Uh, there's a few dollars left. 7,000, something like that. Yeah. But well, there's probably a few things to spend some on to make some of this stuff work. So, yeah. um, anyway, well, that's a bigger discussion. I don't want to take mm -hmm. a lot of time um, on that. Um, and I think uh, one other quick thing I want to mention is uh, at the Nichols Pond Dam, um, the, there were dam inspectors that came up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Governor Scott decided that uh, all the dams should be inspected, and of course mm -hmm. uh, the dam people in Vermont, maybe I shouldn't characterize that way. Anyway, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, um, they called in help from other states, and uh, these two guys from Massachusetts mm. were up to do the inspection. Mm -hmm. They're with the dam, dam program in, in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, they, uh, of course they were incredibly impressed by Nichols Pond, like most people mm -hmm. are when mm -hmm. get up there. But, yeah. Yeah. And they've seen a lot of them, but they were, they were really into it. But um, they were happy, I guess, with the work that happened. I asked the, the question, you know, Carolyn mentioned uh, there was that area they had, had some fires on the dam, fire little fireplace thing, I asked mm -hmm. them that. And it is that area that did wash out some mm -hmm. around there, and I asked if that could have been a factor, and they said, no, that wasn't what was going on. That's just where the water would have naturally mm -hmm. run when it overran the dam. But convincing others that that's the case, I don't know. I'm just letting you know that's what they thought, and they were okay with it. And obviously, they so when they were there, it was after the flood. Yeah. yeah. It was after the restoration. So whoever had put in that nice little stone circle where there used to be a, yeah, that was a fire pit, that was gone. I'm yeah, sure. It was gone. That was part <laughs> yeah. of the area that washed out. So yeah. it's a natural thing to think that mm -hmm. maybe that has something to do with it, because there was no grass growing right there. <laughs> But the um, but they said that would not have been a factor in no. terms of what happened there. Very in strong. their opinion, of course, and they, they know a lot more about it than mm -hmm. I do. So, um, so that's what what happened with that, and I'll, I'll leave it there. And thank you for so the the myself. dam inspectors 
conclusion was? Or? They were okay with that. I, mm -hmm. you know, the whole business about the gate. Um, there, there, for those that don't know, there was a, a gate at the end of end of the spillway. Um, exactly why it was put there, I'm not sure. When the the William King was a uh, engineering firm that. Um, you know, design the dam repair. It was that whole midsection that got rebuilt, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and Hebert Construction did the work, and that, they specialize in dams. So, um, exactly why it's there is, is one thing, but when it should be there, uh, maybe it was just a little safety feature, so kids, if they're walking across the dam, don't wind up falling mm -hmm. off the end. Mm. It's pretty maybe. slippery, yeah. walking across. It's very yeah. slimy. Yeah. Yeah. So it. Um, Maybe that, maybe not, I don't know. But what happens is um, it catches stuff and blocks the flow. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I called them once, Hardware Electric once, because uh, there were a bunch of logs there that was, it was mm -hmm. starting to raise up. Mm -hmm. I let them know about it, and apparently they came and removed that. And then... Um, but that's when there was a gate, right? Yeah. And now and there's it, no gate? Yeah, and then... Well, then I'll finish and we'll get to that part. Okay, sorry. And, the, uh, <laughs> and then they... Uh, after the, the major flooding, I was there on Wednesday, and um, it was uh, the water level was right at the top of the dam, and with water mm. lapping over it, and that the gate was partially blocked. But mm. th this time it was with uh, like small debris and stuff that were just blocking the flow, and mm -hmm. I let them know, to, you know, figuring they clear, clean it off or whatever. But um, apparently, uh, Mike came down with a. a backhoe or something and grabbed onto the gate and ripped it out mm. and ripped it out basically yeah. um, and uh, removed it mm. so and for that matter the damn people think there really shouldn't be a gate there on the other hand there's an issue of safety so I don't know um, I don't know why they put it there I don't know if it should or shouldn't be there but that's but you don't that's know why they took it out I don't know why they took it out because it was blocking the flow it, it was about I mean, they couldn't have just cleaned it out and Theoretically, I guess, you know, that, I mean, that was yeah. my intent when I let them know that. I tried cleaning out with, with stickers and stuff right. to get some of that stuff off it, but it, uh, mm. it was significantly blocked and was really, as soon as they did that, the water level was dropped wow. off the foot, so it, mm. uh, it was significant. Um, it, uh, it's, it's a good question. I, I don't know what should mm -hmm. happen with that. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but we're, mm. we'll see in the overall discussion okay. of it all. So. Mm. Mm. That's my report. Okay. Thanks, Norm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Do you want to hang around for our executive session later? It's executive session. I don't know that I'm an executive. <laughs> you are now. You are the EMD. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's up to you guys whether you want me to be there. Well, we'll if, we, if you're here, we'll probably invite you to stay. The bar too. It's gone. It's gone. Can you shut that door? Thank you. I'm wearing it. Yeah. I keep seeing them fly by out there. You want them to come in that way instead? <laughs> okay. Town clerk's report. Basically, it's been cleanup. <laughs> mm. We got the um, sewer pipe taken care of this afternoon. Hmm. So, Derek did that? Nope. nope. Derek did that. Oh, you're. Oh, okay. No, he's a licensed plumber. Yeah. Volunteered his time, came down and did it. He just cleaned. Yeah, the sealed the up pipe there. that came into that little room where the. Um, Water heater is. Yeah. He cut that right off and capped that one. Oh. Okay. And then the one that was on the other side of the wall, he unscrewed that white cover and put something in there with some tape and put that back on. Mm hmm Yep. Well, thanks to Derek. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then he had me go up and flush the toilet to make sure nothing was leaking and nothing is leaking. There was no hole in the pipe. Great. So would then when the lady comes to meet with Ron tomorrow, they'll be. She'll be able to, the yep. bathroom will be usable, but yep. okay. <laughs> Unless I go in tomorrow morning and find something in the bucket yep. down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we had a nice visit from the, uh, uh, what is it, one of the OSSU. Yeah, he's the building maintenance, maintenance guy, yep. building maintenance supervisor. 
Todd Deliver Shilker, yeah, Todd. and he uh, he gave some good advice about what to do with the basement. What was yeah, And he said he, we did a very good job about getting that cleaned out of there. Yeah, we did. Yes. Uh, he was actually impressed when he walked down the stairs. Oh, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. well, um, what were his recommendations? To get dehumidifiers down in the basement. Mm -hmm. He says right now do not use fans. Okay. Um, so, and then Carol Ray called me back and told me that United Way has the availab availability to get dehumidifiers, so I put a call into them to see if we can get some. Because the guy that I was talking with... Uh, Reynolds and Son and Barry just got a uh, shipment of dehumidifiers that they're offering specifically to municipalities. Okay, oh, I'll call them tomorrow morning. Yeah. Offering like renting or offering like? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I uh -huh. got the email at work. I can forward it to you when Please. I get home. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Was there a recommendation for how many dehumidifiers? He said two. Oh, one is on the each side. of the room. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. Yep. Yep. And that hole that's in the floor, he mm -hmm. said that we could pipe it right into that. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Okay. Is the fire department not using the dehumidifier that we have there? Uh, I do not know. I haven't had a chance to yeah, speak to Paul. Mm -hmm. so. I haven't been to the station. I've been uncomfortably busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you still need one for the Dana building as well? I have to get mud out of that building first. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there will be, yes. Can but, you keep us out of there? Yeah, but just remember it's a very low. Which building is this? The post office. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I'll send my kids in for that one. <laughs> okay, I, th I think Tim is short. Yeah. <laughs> no, he will still have to bend over. No. It's short down there. Oh. Okay. Mm. And I think that's about all I have. It's basically been clean up. Randy, you got any money left? <laughs> uh, income, which we haven't had any income, it's just been a week. Um, I transferred 27000 from the money market over into checking. Um, mm -hmm. Payroll, $5,696.25 for this week. Um, accounts payable, uh, Have you decided, this is another question, but have you decided where to hold your tax sales? It's happening at the town office. Really? Yeah, okay. It's been published for the town yeah, office. Yeah, okay. Yep. Even though there's all that stuff in there. It can be outdoors. I mean, oh. literally, it's five minutes per... The thing all set, Chris? Interesting. Per parcel. Yeah, What's so you can get a little tent or something. Area for that, you have to have... A certain can, amount of money, years, Chris? cash, or a check made out to cash or something. Like, yes. what's the... I can forward you with the, the okay. attorney. Um, okay. Mm. I wish I had hey. had um, cash. Chris, um, we can hear you. Cashier's check. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. For the full amount or a deposit of... Or there can be a wire transfer. Gotcha. Um, there's on the, the website, and I have packets in the office put together. Okay. Um, stating what the minimum is. Uh -huh. um, some people are playing it safe and doing an up and beyond mm -hmm. um, for the bid, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Cool, I'll come by and pick up mm -hmm. information packet from yeah. you. Yeah, cool. Michael? I have a money thing. That, um, I was thinking of asking the school what's happening with the outdoor classroom. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard a thing, it, um, and I'm wondering if nothing is going to happen with it if we could ask for our town money back. Mm. To Fifteen thousand dollars. The, the well, board. we need no to ask that. them first, right. um, mm. but it may not mm. be that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we gave them some of the ARPA money mm -hmm. and 8, some of the mm -hmm. leftover. Mm -hmm. I can send an email to Larry or mm -hmm. one of those select board members can and just ask. The choir is done. Hmm? The choir is done. Larry's, Larry's done finally? Done. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah, his replacement is David Brosho. Okay, he, David was working with him before. Mm -hmm. um, we could inquire about that mm -hmm. and if it's just going to be sitting on a mm -hmm. shelf. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just, I mean, it was originally it was going to be a simple project between the town and the school mm -hmm. and it got all bogged down in state education stuff and fire permits, etc. I think those, those things were resolved. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the status is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. And that's the executive session. <clears throat> I have a conflict of interest because I'm a camp owner there, so I probably shouldn't be involved in the executive session on that. Is you going to say the same thing? Well, I am a camp owner. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only a, a conflict if, you know, it's a conflict. If you feel like you can have an opinion that benefits the whole situation, as opposed to your little camp, you know, but, well, I it's send not an a email out and express one, my thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, expressed mm -hmm. it earlier in the meeting too. Yeah, so pretty much mm -hmm. same. But in terms of the executive mm -hmm. session, I probably okay. Bye. See ya. Okay, <laughs> Anybody else before we go into executive session? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, you know, really? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I just forwarded uh, 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 to your Thanks for bringing up. Okay. Thank you very much, James. I'm always getting my putting my seatbelt on as I do right? Randy, I love your job. I've been like eyeballing it throughout the meeting. It's really pretty. You want me to close this door now that we're leaving? Oh, okay, you're right. I thought you were going to make a motion that we enter executive session. I'll second that. And it's uh, five minutes to eight, seven fifty-five. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, Chris. Okay.